Hi, this is Karen at Snickerdoodle Designs, and today I'm here to introduce you to my new droplet templates. It's not often that there's a feature in Photoshop Elements that's not available in the full version of Photoshop, but there is now, and it is amazing. With the release of Photoshop Elements versions 15 just last week, a drag and drop feature was incorporated, which with used with specifically created templates such as this, allows the user to simply drag and drop a photo, paper, element, text, any image into the template without using clipping masks. The templates can be used by full version Photoshop users as well, but the drag and drop feature is not functional in the full version of Photoshop. Um, that user would need to use a clipping mask just as they normally would with any template. Notice the badge on the package says that these templates work in Photoshop Elements 10 through 15. That's right, it, they do. Adobe took a feature that was available in Elements 10 through 14 and developed it further to create the drag and drop functionality that is now in version 15. The feature works slightly differently in versions 10 through 14 than it does in version 15. There is a little bit less editing capability in versions 10 through 14, but for the type of templates that I have created, that limited uh, capability does not present a problem for us at all. It is not a factor. So let's go ahead and take a look at what these look like in version 15. When you first open a template, you will notice the layers panel maybe looks a little different than you're used to. That is because Photoshop Elements 15 has introduced groups and grouping is incorporated into the drag and drop feature. We don't need to know anything about groups in order to use these templates. So I'm not going to talk about groups today. I'm going to fo uh, focus excuse me, simply on how to get these frames populated with our pictures, photographs, papers, whatever we'd like. So there are two ways to do that. One is to click on the text within the frame. I am in frame number one. If I click on the colored area or the mask, nothing happens. But if I click on the text, that is the signal for elements to open my computer folder structure and then I'm able to navigate to whatever kit or photograph I would like to use. I simply click on it to select it and hit place and it will populate the frame that I was working with. This little pop-up box will appear and you can use the slider to resize your paper if you like. If you'd like to rotate it, click on the blue box to rotate it. And if you decide, hmm, I really don't want that paper, I want another one, you can click on the yellow box to go back into your folder and choose another paper. And I'm happy with what I've chosen, so I'm going to hit cancel. If you have na navigated away from that box and you decide you do want to replace that paper, you can double click on the box and the slider will come back up for you. And that's how easy it is to populate a frame. Now, I did say there was another way, so let's take it the other look at the second method. And that is by using the photo bin. When we use the photo bin, all we need to do is click on the image, drag it up, and drop it right into our frame. If we'd like to move it down a little bit, like I'd like to do this to this paper, is just move it down until I get it where I want. Make sure that your photograph or your paper is selected. If you by chance are on the mask, you will move everything because this group will move as one. I'm going to control Z to undo that and make sure that's right back in the space where it should be. And that paper is fine, so I'm going to leave it there. Now let's go ahead and see how quickly we can populate the rest of these frames and complete this layout. This is my grandson Owen, and obviously I need to see his head, so I'm going to move this down just a little bit. This is my son and daughter-in-law. These were taken just a few days ago. I really like to use journal cards on papers, um, 
pocket pages like this. They just add a lot of character. And when you drop something in a frame that has already been populated, it will simply replace what was there. And that's what happened when I dropped this journal card in. It replaced the paper that was there. And let's go ahead and add this purple paper here. And there's a little text up here. If I click on that, I can go in and grab this as my background. I could have dragged it up if I liked, but I decided to click it on the text instead. I need to move him down. Whoops, see, I did it. Control Z to get that back in place. Let's make sure I'm on the right photograph and move him down just a little bit. Very easy to make that mistake, but also a very easy fix. So we could call this done, but it's a little boring. I'd like to um, embellish it a little bit. So click on the top layer, hold down the shift key, scroll down, click on the last layer that will select all of the layers. Then release the shift key, hold down control, Alt, E, the letter E, and that will place a composite at the very top of your layers panel. And now we can drag things on here without them accidentally dropping into these groups. So this is a cluster from the kit Trick or Treat. This is a great way to use clusters or pre-made borders or, that are included in collections. And I think I have an arrow here. Let's go ahead and grab this arrow. And I think I'd like to just place a date. So I will make a new layer, select the text tool, and just like type whatever I would like. And that's done. And that's how fast it was to make this layout. Now let's take a quick look at version number 14. Okay, here we are in version number 14. And if you look over here at the layers panel, this is probably more like what you're used to seeing. There's one element on one layer. Populating the frames is exactly the same. If I click on the text, it will take me to my folder structure to find a photograph or a paper, whatever I'm looking for. Or I can also drag and drop from the photo bin just like I did in Elements 15. The difference is that the paper or the photograph now becomes that square. If we decide that we want to change it, we can come up to the folder as in 15 or we can drag something up and replace it. What we need to do is create that merged composite just like we did in 15. First layer, shift, last layer to select all, and then control alt E to create the merge. And then again, we can go ahead and, I'm sorry, my hand slipped. We can go ahead and drop in elements however we like, and again, they're going to be on top of that merged image. So the only real difference is that version 14 doesn't use groups, but like I said at the very beginning of this tutorial, with these tutor with I'm sorry, with these particular templates, that's not a concern for us. Other type of templates, yes, we'll look at those another day, but for now we're starting fun, fast, and easy, and I hope you really enjoy playing with these templates. They've, they've just been a lot of fun to work with, and my creative team has really enjoyed them as well. I hope you do too. Thanks for watching. See you next time.